Welcome to Transformation with Martinet. Martinet Emmons is a transformational life coach who broke free from childhood abuse, sexual trauma, and overcame cancer to become a powerful force of healing and hope for others. Martinet describes traumatic events as fierce emotional tsunamis. They can leave impending doom and destructive tidal waves of emotions that hit you when you least expect it. Martinet helps her clients dive into the depths of their trauma and pain as she stands fiercely advocating for them to shine a light on those experiences and find the lesson in the pain. She serves as a beacon of hope that guides you to see the strength, lessons, and purpose that can be born from the pain. You can feel alive with purpose again when you awaken your dormant strength, step into your power with a sense of peace, and discover a new wave of hope with the right tools and support. Martine and her guests are here shining their lights today through empowering stories of hardship and transformation to inspire you to find hope and to see that there is a beautiful blue ocean of serenity, happiness, and fulfillment in your future. Transformation with Martine starts now. to Transformation with Martine, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. I'm so excited to be back, especially on Christmas Eve. This is pretty awesome. I hope everybody's having a wonderful holiday so far. Um, So for those of you who don't know, my show is live every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And my show is about hope. Each guest I invite on my show has a story of hope, transformation, resilience, I believe, as most of my guests do, or all my guests do, that um, we as humans can get back up from anything. I would like to mess, um, mess, oh my goodness, what is going on with me today? I would like to mention that today, this show is sponsored by my friend and local realtor in Fenton, Michigan, who handles all surrounding areas of Grand Blank and Fenton and Linden. And he is a fabulous realtor for all my local friends and local listeners. Hit him up. He does a fabulous job. And I'm so privileged and honored that he wanted to sponsor this show. So without further ado, I want to welcome my amazing guest. We are colleagues and friends. Luke Horstead, please do a formal introduction of yourself, please. Hello, hello. <clears throat> I feel very lucky to be here, Martine. So thank you mm-hmm. very much for having me here today. Um, and especially with your show being about hope, mm-hmm. it's, it's something, yeah. and transformation, is something I'm very passionate about because of my story. Mm-hmm. So I'm a men's transformational coach over in the UK. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't ever see myself being here because I didn't have hope at one point in my life. Right. Um, so would you like me to dive into part of my story? Absolutely. I just got to say, it's just, to me, it's just so fun. I love men with accents. I love women with accents. I love just listening. So yeah, whatever we talk about is great. I just want to hear it. <laughs> so yes, please share your story of how um, you came to where you are now and your, your message of hope. Excellent. So yeah, I, when I left school, I went straight into the construction industry over mm-hmm. in the UK and it's tough enough being a man in in the world that we live in I'm not saying it isn't tough for women they just have Mm -hmm. different challenges to men Mm -hmm. um but being a man in the construction industry is like a level up from that you have to be tougher than the tough men because you're in the construction industry so I've spent a long time in the construction industry and I then went on to setting up my own business Mm -hmm. and I I wasn't happy. I was okay in life, but I wasn't happy. I'd been through lots of stuff Mm -hmm. like we all have, Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't living my best life. Mm -hmm. And then when I was running, I'd set my business up. I was running my plumbing and heating business. Then children came along. Yeah. um, And the pressure went through the roof. It Mm -hmm. really, really did. And Mm -hmm. by nature, I'm a people pleaser. So if you're running a business especially in construction you want to keep all of your customers happy Mm -hmm. and then children come along and you want to be the best parent as well 
And you don't also want to forget about your wife because she's going through a lot at home in the day with the kids. And that there was just a lot going on. And on top of that, running a business, I was also chasing money from customers and it just became a lot. I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a network of people that I could talk to about it because Mm -hmm. my network in the construction industry would say, get a grip, man Mm -hmm. up, what's the problem? Just get on with it, have a drink, Mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did have a drink, but it was never Mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. And it... (laughs) It got to a point where I was just going around in this cycle for so long, the sleep deprivation, all of this stuff. And I got to a point where I, I didn't, I started having suicidal thoughts Mm -hmm. and they, they hadn't been there before, but when the pressure mounted, they were just coming up. I wasn't good enough. I couldn't keep everyone happy. Mm -hmm. Um, And nothing would ever change. There was, I thought there was no hope. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point one day where I actually went out, sat in my van, and I knew if I started the engine, I wouldn't be coming home. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't, I just couldn't even put the key in the ignition. And before I go any further, there's, there's one, one thing I want to talk about with the, the suicidal mind. And mm-hmm. I didn't know this at the time, and a lot of people don't know this, but the, the people that actually have suicidal thoughts or take their own lives, they, they don't want to die. Mm-hmm. They believe there's no more hope and they just want to escape the pain that they're feeling. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have, that have been suicidal in the past and people have said to them, well, don't be selfish. What about your poor children and family? And from my experience, what I know it makes it worse because the self-punishment is what they want to get away from. Mm-hmm. So to enforce even more of that is, is only going to intensify the situation. Yeah. So I just wanted to get that bit in there. It's very important oh, to I, me. I, I agree. I've, I've been there a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a hard place. It's, it's an, a very hard I place. I thought I had, there was no hope. Mm -hmm. I could never change anything in my life. This was my mindset, Mm -hmm. my mentality at the time. Mm -hmm. And because I couldn't even start the engine, I told myself, well, I can't even do that. I failed here as well. Mm -hmm. And I failed so much. There's nothing else I can really fail at. I may as well try something different. And I just went in and spoke to my wife. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's always been incredibly supportive, but she gave me the motivation and basically said look I know you're in this the mindset you've always been in based on what you've been brought up with but Mm -hmm. if you really want to change then you've just got to try doing something different you've got to look at the personal development journey and she she -hmm. tried lots of stuff she used to put mindfulness books in front of me and I was like yeah whatever and I wouldn't (laughs) even read it um it was it, it was just where I was all right um I prefer to have a drink and fall asleep watching TV than Mm -hmm. focus on myself. But it got to the point where I I did. I spent quite a few years going through the whole personal development journey, Mm -hmm. lots of different avenues. And I've been doing cold showers for a couple of years now, different types of breath work, Mm -hmm. um, lots of books I've read and documentaries I've watched to help me become more an observer of my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And just, just manage kind of how everything's going on. But, but those yeah. things were coping mechanisms. Mm-hmm. They were helping me to get by, which mm-hmm. is, it was better, far better than where I was. But it wasn't until I got into the coaching industry mm-hmm. and I was coached personally that I actually got access to where the problems were inside of me, where they were mm-hmm. stored mm-hmm. to release them. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure so many people can relate to, you know, the really heavy feelings that you carry around. You've, you may have had lots of sleep at night, but you still feel tired in the morning and mm-hmm. everything feels difficult. Mm-hmm. And I had times like that. And once I shifted those things through coaching, I was like, wow, other people have got to feel this. Mm-hmm. I just want other people to feel this. I want those guys that are on the edge that think, there's no hope. There's no way out 
to know that there is, there really is. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. There is hope. There is hope. You know, I, there was, like I mentioned a couple of times being there, one when I was really young and I was just, well, going through a lot of abuse, but um, I just remember, and I was still at home at this point, I had, I had downed a lot of pills. I don't even remember what they were. And I got scared and I told my mom, because like you said, I didn't really want to die. I just did not want to feel bad anymore. So that was handled, not in the best of way, but it was handled. Um, and then um, being, being to the point where I was on my own, I had to wait, I had three kids by myself. You know, um, and there was a time like I was thinking, geez, maybe I should have just stayed, even though it wasn't the place for me. And it, that's a long story for another time. But I remember going to the doctor, <clears throat> excuse me, asking for some kind of help because I don't want to get up in the morning to go to work. I didn't want to get my kids ready and get them to school. I didn't want to go to work and do the exact same thing and then come home and, oh man, try to entertain, try to make them feel good, try to boost them up, try to be mom and dad and go to bed and just stress on, oh my God, am I gonna have enough money? Am I gonna be able to pay the rent? And then get up and do the same thing over and over again. And this doctor was really good. Um, I didn't end up getting the medication, but he just said, he goes, you have got to take care of you first because no one's cared for if you're not. And that was, that kind of got me into, because I, I started into personal development in my early twenties, but I'd kind of forgotten about it. Just being in just this, place where I had to manage all of it by myself. And it was three years before I met my now husband that really, you know, helped the rest of the journey of raising kids. Not done yet, but you know, a good amount of time helping me with that. So I know what it like, it feels like to just feel like, oh my, how am I, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to raise these young people to be self-sufficient, um, feeling good about themselves with a purpose with, I didn't want to, I didn't want to clip any wings, like trying to like, oh, you know, like trying to make them be a little bit calm because I need a break. I need rest. I can't hear the noise just to have some peace, you know, and I didn't want, I didn't want to stop them from being who they are. I, I didn't know how I was going to get through it until starting to some care and getting people to work with, to help me through this. So I, I know, I know. It's just so important to, to get that support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I never wanted to, and it's something I've spoken about in some of the content that I've put out there as well, that mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I, I didn't want to go and see a therapist mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go and sit down with someone who sat behind a desk mm -hmm. that's in a suit. I mean, this was what mm -hmm. I was telling myself right. anyway. Gotcha. Um, that doesn't know anything about my life they don't know what the real world's like because they've they've gone to school they've gone to college university they've had it easy even though I know no one has had it easy now yeah um and I was like no I, I'm not going to go and do that mm -hmm. so for me what I'm really passionate about offering and one of the reasons I wanted to get into the work that I do now is because I can relate to pretty much anyone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to just have someone that you can really build that trust with mm -hmm. because the things you haven't even spoken to your closest family members about, to have put the trust in someone to actually, you know, start unlocking those things to release them and move on and, you know, live a far happier life. There's got to be a lot mm -hmm. of trust there. And oh, yeah. that's why I love having clients come to me and I can, mm -hmm. I can relate to a lot of stuff they've had if they've run mm -hmm. businesses and mm -hmm. they're struggling to get money from customers and or just all these other things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things for me is really important. Oh, yeah. And if you've been through some major things, especially in our line of work, of visibility is scary. I have a new client. He's really scared of visibility and putting himself out what if they think i'm stupid what if this what if that and that's a lot of what had happened to him before i know that was the way it is with me i i'm doing this podcast because it scares me it's scary to be visible <laughs> and i wanted to have it professionally produced because 
at least I don't have to worry about that part <laughs> and messing that up per se, but it's still scary to be live. You know, you know, this is out live. So it's a scary thing. Um, but it's taken a lot of work to be like, yeah, you know, my message is important. I want people to feel just like you do, that they can rise up. They can get above anything. And we, with stories that we have, are relatable. I think therapy is wonderful, but it's past. <laughs> Us, coaching, it's the future. We work on the stuff from the past, and then we dive into what we want to do in the future. It doesn't mean that we don't need any work in there. We definitely do. You know, people to hold us accountable and people to delve in and ask us those questions that we might not even think of ourselves. We need someone else to pull that out. So coaching to me is, is amazing. It certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to talk more about where did you start to begin again? Like, what was that, you know, your wife suggested trying these other things and at first, okay, the books may not have been that important, but then you say, okay, I do need to make a change. So how did you start changing? So we'll be right back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. Today's show is brought to you by local realtor, my local realtor, Michigan, um, Andy Alger of Keller Williams Realty. Thank you so much, Andy, for helping bring this show out live. Um, and my guest today is Luke Horstead, and he is a transformational coach for men. And we are talking about his story, what brought him to the world of coaching. Um, so Luke, um, your wife had given you some books and stuff to look at. And at the time you weren't really interested, but then was there like a, a just like a pivotal moment? Like, okay. Pff, like for me, when I got diagnosed with cancer the next day, yep. Time to make a change time to do what my purpose is, which is coaching and podcasting and all that. That's what my pivotal moment, what was yours? It, for me, it was it was when I had got out of the van that night and mm -hmm. said, "Look, enough is enough." Yeah. Because um, on before that, she had seen that I wasn't as happy as I could be. I used to get mm -hmm. stressed a lot. I wasn't sleeping very much. Yeah. Um, so that was the moment where I was like, "What else have I got to lose?" Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, <clears throat> I can't continue feeling what I'm feeling inside, and. It's making me have suicidal thoughts. So yeah. what else can I do? I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to die. I've got, I had two lovely children at the time. Yeah. One of them was very young. Got mm -hmm. three now. Mm -hmm. Three is <laughs> um, great. I have three. <laughs> yeah. Three and they're all three years apart. Oh, Lordy, yep. <laughs> so, so after that, I, I tried lots of things. I started, um, I started listening to some more mindfulness stuff. Mm -hmm. I started listening to the, just the impact of the thoughts. That was a really, really big one for me. Mm -hmm. Just the thoughts that we tell ourselves when things mm -hmm. happen and how we can actually control that ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we make the assumption of what something means when someone does a certain thing, mm -hmm. is not all the ways the way it is. So for example, if I had a customer that, um didn't pay me all of the money for for some reason or other i would tell myself it's because they think i'm not very good at my job they oh, being a man yeah. it's oh they think that i won't go and challenge them i'm a wimp all of these other things when mm -hmm. without even having a conversation with them they might not have got paid from their job this month they might need an extra month to to wait until they can pay me because of something that's going on in their life they may not even realize they've underpaid me Mm -hmm. but I was in the place where I couldn't even have those conversations because I told myself if I start the conversation I'll become aggressive and this is what mm -hmm. happens with a lot of men people go oh, a lot of men are aggressive especially when they drink yeah there's no surprise because when all these things happen in our life we just stuff them down we bury them really deep and then when we have a drink and the head's turned off boom they just come out of an explosion and it's, right. <laughs> but I, I stopped myself before the explosion, but by mm -hmm. doing that, I led myself to self-sabotage. 
I attacked myself with my own thoughts and that's what led me down the path. So when I started to understand that and I become a real observer of my behavior, it sounds really simple and it's not, but it's so powerful when you can do it. Why am I thinking that when some, if someone I had someone um, cut me up when I was driving a few weeks back mm -hmm. and I've got my, um, I have my one-year-old in the car uh -huh. and normally you get quite, well, as a man, you get very protective. Mm -hmm. Um, and the guy stopped and it was, it was his fault but there was no blaming he stopped and he was a tradesman as well mm -hmm. and he started screaming at me and because I could control what was going in here the thought wasn't he thinks I'm this and that it was he must be having a really hard time right and he drove on by and n nothing showed up in my body so because mm -hmm. I was able to control what went in my head, yeah. the, my body didn't get lit up with a negative emotion that I, I say negative. It's only negative if, if you bury it, right, um, right. which typically men do. Right. And I did. Mm -hmm. um, so that didn't happen. And it's a very, very simple shift that I made that really started me. It helped me to learn and understand what I used to think, who I really am, and just 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 more about me. Mm -hmm. I stopped just operating on autopilot, and it was more conscious living. Right, exactly. So that that was one big thing. The other the big thing was <clears throat> I got into um, cold showers, ice baths, mm -hmm. um, because of the positive effects it has on your body and also your mind, because you release antidepressant hormones and stuff when you're mm -hmm. doing all these exercises um so i went through some courses on that uh, alongside breath work mm -hmm. so the one i did was the wim hof method okay um and it become very apparent to me that people like myself that was jumping into those those programs to do those things they were getting better but then they had uncontrollable amount of emotion. A lot of them do, and they still mm -hmm. do now because I'm part yeah. of communities where um, everyone helps each other out and, and with the Wim Hof method. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. You do feel so alive, but when mm -hmm. you have unexplained emotions that are just coming up, that's when it's critical to get support with that because those things have been locked away for so long. Mm -hmm. If you get a transformational coach come along you know someone like yourself or me mm -hmm. when someone's got floods of emotion coming up it's like yes this is it we haven't even got a search for it. it's there right. let's support you right now and let's let's heal it and let's mm -hmm. move forward yes. um so i've taken these things into my um coaching now mm -hmm. not everyone wants to do the the cold exposure right. um for obvious reasons and that's fine but I have developed my own set of um, breathwork techniques alongside my coaching techniques mm -hmm. just to help men to break, break free from the, the chains that we've wrapped around our, <laughs> our hearts. Right. Where right. all of these things are just, you know, locked away. Right. It's very hard to get there for men. We just want to move on quick from things. Nothing bothers us. Mm hmm you know yeah that was a problem yesterday why are you still talking about it and the reason we we do that is because we can't face it or and you're not allowed to express it right it's yeah we we don't know how to i mean i was i was taught at a very young age that it's not manly to love anyone oh wow and that was how it was in school oh you love someone oh look at you you love someone. and it was that whole kind of playground stuff mm. but that's that stuff sticks yeah that stays for with sure you. well I've never like I, I guess I've never heard anybody say that that you shouldn't love I mean men aren't supposed to express their emotions so much you know they're not allowed like women are to well to cry to to share to just like you're saying in the beginning that um, men and especially men in the construction business or anything like that you've just got to be tough That'd be those warriors, you know, that nothing gets you down or whatever. Um, but at least like with your wife, I'm sure she was a safe space to express yourself, even if you couldn't express it outside, but you have that safe space to do it. 
but I, I've never, like I said, heard that, that um, you're not supposed to love anyone. Did your parents teach you that too? Or was that something no, for me, it was just, just out in the schoolyard? It was just in, in school. Everyone, everyone okay. teased everyone mm-hmm. for, yeah. well, just boys for, if you love someone else, love was a sign uh-huh. of weakness, even though okay. I now know love is yeah. one of the, the strongest things you can feel. It's actually the driver for everything we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and below all of the, the anger and everything else, everyone just wants to be loved. Mm-hmm. And if you oh, say that, yeah. even if you say that to men, oh, yeah, look, he's really upset he wants to be loved. They mm-hmm. don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. I know that for sure. Yeah. And I yeah. probably can turn up on a construction site and say, look, guys, I know you all want to be loved. Do you want a hug? Because yeah. it, it just doesn't <laughs> it, it just doesn't work. So there's there's mm-hmm. different um, there's different ways to get deeper with guys when they're in communities or when you know we're one on one. Just trying to break free from some of those things but all of these like like you know all of these things from our childhood they just stick Mm -hmm. and when my wife was supporting me I didn't even know that the problems I hadn't dealt with even existed still Mm -hmm. they were there I didn't find that out until we were coaching Mm -hmm. I had a massive fear of speaking and I thought I knew why I thought it was when I was in secondary school I was about 14 and I was reading a book and everyone started laughing at me. Mm -hmm. When I was being coached, I found out it was when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And what it was, and it wasn't even bad. I was struggling to read a book. I was Mm -hmm. five. (laughs) And my my mum said to me, don't worry. Um, Some of us are better at some things than others. You're better at maths Mm -hmm. than English. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. a parent being a great parent she was trying to make me feel as though it's all okay don't worry don't stress about it especially at such a young age Mm -hmm. I took that as I can't read Mm -hmm. and then that led to me not wanting to speak right and since kind of launching the coaching business it's been great to just put myself out there and do videos I wouldn't even put Mm -hmm. pictures up of myself eventually because these things manifest it starts off as that little thing and because you don't deal with it it just and then when I went back and looked at it I was like she actually just she really cared she was just Mm -hmm. trying to help me yeah yeah but you but you don't know I didn't even know it still existed so that's why the coaching is so powerful but you go back you you work on that and then Mm -hmm. boom you take it forward in your life yes It's, it's it's magical it, it is really magical. Is. Mm, it's absolutely magical. So you're talking about like, you know, um, well, actually a couple of things. So I had somebody say to me, and I, I want to say it was in my, in a psychology class. Um, I don't know if it was a teacher, just one of the students said something like people are likely to ask to borrow $50 than they are to ask for a hug. I think that's like completely true still, you know, and this was 20 years ago when I was in school. So, um, yeah, I just, I thought that's always stayed with me. And then also you mentioned, um, breath. I think that is something that we often forget about because we can't be anxious or stressed or, you know, agitated if we just breathe, if we can just remember to take in that breath. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's so important. There's, <clears throat> I mean, they're not things I've developed. They're things I've learned through my journey, but mm-hmm. I've now got um, three different types of breath work I use um, mm-hmm. for different things. If you want to mm-hmm. feel energized, this is how you breathe. Very simple. Um, yeah. If you want to just feel, you know, just centered and normal, here's another mm-hmm. one. If you, if you want to go to sleep at night or you want to calm down and you actually want to slow your heart down, slow your brain down to get it more relaxed. There's mm-hmm. another type of breath work to do this. And they're all yeah. very, it's breathing. We can all do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something Absolutely. that we, because we do it unconsciously, mm-hmm. we forget about the importance of it. Oh, yeah. And just to, if you add in, just like taking a deep breath, closing your eyes, even hands over the heart, and just asking yourself what you need at that time changes 
well, it can change everything going on, especially if, I mean, if you're driving, obviously you can't do that, but if you are just happen to be, you know, at home and you're worried about something, just taking it just a minute to do that can change the whole level of anxiety or the whole mood or whatever you have going on. Mm -hmm. It just cal yeah. calms you down from that overwhelm. You can go, ah, oh, that's actually the problem. Not these 10 things. It's actually just yeah. one of them that's amplifying the rest of them. But yes. until you close your eyes and just take those breaths. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as a man, if I, if I say to a man, just close your eyes, take some breath. <laughs> yeah, just do it. But I, yeah. the reason I got into the Wim Hof method was because it looked incredibly manly. Okay. Because he's, okay. Very, he's very tough. He'll go out and sit in the snow. He'll get in an ice bath. I was like, yeah, I can do that. I can be <laughs> tough. But then yeah. I realized very quickly how connected you became after doing it, how you got more alignment between your head and your heart mm -hmm. and how you can just change your state. Mm -hmm. but you know for the good just by breathing in different ways for sure and the whole you know I've heard a lot about the whole ice bath um cold showers kind of thing I will do that once in a while the shower part normal shower and at the last minute hit myself with a blast of cold water and I do it because I tell myself it's because you know I've got red in my hair it keeps the red strong in my hair by doing that or so my daughter says who does my hair <laughs> so I, I tell myself that but it really kind of energizes you, at least. I mean, it does me, but I, I'm not about to jump in the ice, icy snow with a, a swimsuit on or, and I'm not about to jump in a cold ice bath, but more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it is, it is really good. All right. I'll take your word for it. So we're going to take a break, but Luke, where can everybody find you right now? Your social they can media find me on instagram or facebook mm -hmm. it's all coach luke h okay um that's where i am most of the time okay. at the moment and you have a website about to go live yes the website's about to go live i'm all right uh, that's exciting lo there's lots of stuff going on at the moment very exciting stuff I, I can talk to you more about that as well okay all right we'll be back everyone thank you so much for listening Welcome back everyone to Transformation with Martine. This is We or Overcome Everything and Compromise Nothing. My show is about hope. And my guest today is Luke Horsted. And we've been talking about men and transformation and breath work and um, cold showers. Yeah, so <laughs> Luke, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, just like jumping into a cold shower, how it can energize you and I guess I would imagine set the tone for the day because you're not the only one that I know who does this. Um, so do you want to talk more about that and the benefits? hundred percent. It's so, so important. And for me, I, I moved house um, about six months ago mm -hmm. and I stopped doing it for a month because mm -hmm. I was too busy. Um, and I noticed how much of an impact it had on me stopping mm -hmm. that morning routine mm -hmm. and the cold showers is a really important thing and there's different things that work for different people mm -hmm. um, but starting the day in the right way is the most important thing for sure. <clears throat> and I, I work with quite a lot of dads now mm -hmm. because what I've found and even for myself my life got even more intense when children came along because mm -hmm. there was less time for me less time for me and the wife yeah. I actually had to get home on time because I wanted to see the children um, and there were sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I recommend for dads that are struggling with sleep deprivation, and this is what I do every single day, mm -hmm. is when they get up in the morning, it's a very hard choice. But instead of going in for the coffee, mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, especially if you suffer from anxiety, Mm -hmm. coffee is one of the worst things that you could dive into because it makes your body think speeds your heart up it makes your body think that it's actually got to get up and be moving around and doing stuff and the chances are mm -hmm. if you're up really early you haven't been sleeping you're then going to go and sit on the sofa mm -hmm. so you get all this built up energy inside and it's not actually going anywhere and that can trigger anxiety there's mm -hmm. probably far more scientific stuff but i'm not a doctor 
I just know <laughs> what works what, for you, mm-hmm. what works for me and, and a lot of other people mm-hmm. as well. Right. So if you can get up like, like I do now and just switch that coffee and just get straight into a cold shower, there are ways to do it. You don't have to go typically with men. We like to go hundred percent or zero percent. And then we, <laughs> we stop it after two weeks. Um, but if you can slowly build up to a cold mm-hmm. shower, like you said earlier, ending your shower with it being cold, Mm-hmm. just for 30 seconds mm-hmm. um to the point where now i just go in straight into a cold shower five minutes mm-hmm. every morning i get out i feel so good after and then <laughs> <clears throat> then an hour or two hours later depends on what time the children have got me up mm-hmm. um i'll then have a coffee and for me it's mm-hmm. not I, I have the coffee not because I, I need it it's because i like it right and something I've learned on this journey is you don't have to give everything up mm-hmm. as long as you don't become dependent on something to get right. by, to survive, to change your emotional state, then it's not something that's typically bad for you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you can get into a cold shower in the morning, if you are incredibly tired, especially mm-hmm. instead of diving in for a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. it will really, really make you feel great and it, it's funny the in the moment you find this with people um with diets and, and everything if in the moment too often we choose the thing that's going to make us feel better in that very moment yes could be 10 20 seconds later after we've had it we're like we should not do that yeah oh, whereas boy. if we can switch it and go i i wake up even this morning i woke up i went no it's getting too cold I'm too tired. I'm not getting in a cold shower. I walk downstairs and I walk straight into it. I, I don't know how it happened. I think once you, <laughs> once you've been, there's no cheat. You can't have cheat days. That's one thing that's key. If you don't have any cheat days and you do something for 90 days, mm-hmm. it's then like brushing your teeth. You can't yeah. not do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is for me in my morning walks. It's like, I don't, if the wind is really high, I may do treadmill or something inside some kind of workout inside but getting outside first thing is what i need i gotta get out there i gotta get in nature i gotta breathe the air i gotta hear the sounds of nature around me i gotta talk to god that is my time to be out there if i don't do that i'm not a happy girl the rest of the day (laughs) yep (laughs) and everybody pays the price (laughs) yeah it's 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 so true starting the day Mm -hmm. in the right way and i've what I've um, referred to it as for myself is overcoming myself at the mm-hmm. start of the day. And if I can overcome myself at the start of the day, if I can get in that cold shower at the start of the day, I can take on anything, whatever's mm-hmm. going to come at me in that day. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Actually one of our colleagues, um, she ran a marathon, not so much because she wanted to run, run a marathon. was the fact that she could say, no matter what comes up in her life, I ran a marathon. Yes. So I can do this too. So I don't want to run a marathon, but I use what she says. <laughs> hey, Kathy ran a marathon. You know, I can do this too. <laughs> yeah. So what, like, what do you do to help men specifically? So I, I work for a lot of men that they, they have problems with mental health. Mm-hmm. It's not something that men want to lean into yeah. um, because of the word mental health, even though we all say, yeah, men's mental health, let's all talk about it but I'm fine. That's yeah. not me. We, we all have mental health. Mm-hmm. And if we get stressed, that's, men, that's, you know, problems with mental health. We need, mm-hmm. we need to learn how to deal with those things so that we don't suffer from them later on in life. So mm-hmm. I, I work with people one-on-one remotely mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, and going live in the next week or two. Yeah. Um, great job. There's lots of lots of stuff coming. There's men's groups that I'm doing. They're face to face groups. But mm-hmm. I'm also going to be doing an online group. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them going into the new year is going to be the 5 a.m. club. So Ooh. I'm just just a couple of guys. I live by the beach now, so I I love <sighs> the beach. I can get in the sea, cold sea. Um, so one day a week, just meet up with some local guys. Let them know I'm going mm-hmm. down to the beach. 5 a.m. Yeah. Uh-huh. just to show them how I start the day in mm-hmm. a healthy way. Um, 
even just helping them with some visualizations Mm -hmm. for you know reaching their goals and dreams Mm -hmm. because our, our work well my work isn't just about if you've got problems it's what are we going for in the future? Let's not stand still. Let's keep moving. And as men, we like to keep moving. Mm-hmm. So setting those intentions at the start of the day with some healthy other practices is something I just want to share with some other guys locally. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on how that goes, may do that remotely, but if people are in different countries, it might not be 5 a.m. for them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's Unless they have a replay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got that, and I've also got um uh a nighttime walk which is like an 8 p.m men's walk nice. just in two areas locally just for mm-hmm. guys that want to get out of the house and become part of a community as as men we <clears throat> we think we have to lone wolf life mm-hmm. we have to do this alone and that's not how it is the the more connected we are to other similar people Mm -hmm. the more we're going to thrive the more we feel part of something so many men feel alone in this world that we live in especially with everything that's gone on over the past couple of years people just feel alone and before i've i mean since i've joined the coaching community that i'm in Mm -hmm. that we're in yeah i didn't know how you can have these connections remotely and how powerful it is and i can phone anyone or even drop a message to so many people around the world now and say, mm-hmm. can you just listen to me for a bit? Mm-hmm. Or can you give me a hand with this? And they will. Yeah. And it's because we've built that community mm-hmm. um, and those connections. So even if it is remote, that is so important to have connections with someone else mm-hmm. aside from the people that live in your home. Yes. And Absolutely. I think that's really important because to have a healthy relationship we have to have a healthy relationship with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that means getting some stuff out. Yes. And our partners don't always want to hear that. If they've been at work all day and or you've been at work all day, haven't seen each other, mm-hmm. you don't having the first thing you say being, Oh my God, I'm feeling like this, that, and the other. Yeah. Isn't always the best thing for a healthy relationship. And that's why mm-hmm. these communities around the world are thriving now. And I want to set a couple up locally just to give people the opportunity to come and join that um and then i will be setting an online one up as well which Mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to oh yeah yeah you know and it's true to being in our personal development world and if our significant other is not they sometimes just just don't want to go there or like you said they've had a rough day at work or whatever you know i mean there are times where I've, i've said to my husband's like okay you got like 10 minutes of, you know, whatever is from work. And then after that, it's probably best that you go to the source of the problem. You know, go ahead, let me in here, but then you probably need to, to figure it out over here. And then, you know, it's the same. Sometime I know he definitely doesn't want to hear what I have to say either. Maybe just, can you hear me just for a few minutes? Is now the, is now okay? If now is not the time, can I have time later? You know, just make it where it's okay for, you know, both of you or reach out to a, a colleague or something. Yeah, have to yeah. respect both boundaries, you know. Definitely, yeah. and it's, it's so important. I think I didn't realize the value of having someone to hold you accountable for mm-hmm. moving forward because we go through these coaching sessions with people and we unlock things. And, and once you unlock and get the truth of what's really going on, then mm-hmm. there's normally action steps to take after that to make yes. sure you fully embody it. Mm-hmm. and having someone that holds you accountable is really important mm-hmm. that being your partner is is not the best thing and mm-hmm. the reason I say that is I, I know that myself anyway mm-hmm. um, but one of my really good friends her husband used to be her personal trainer mm-hmm. and he would always hold her accountable boom she would never like go off track yeah now they're married he's got that emotional connection if she Mm -hmm. looks like she's having a tough time and she needs an accountability partner he can't be an accountability partner and a husband so he Mm -hmm. goes don't worry have a night off tonight yeah because he cares because she Mm -hmm. might need a night off tonight yeah um but that's why it's important if you are part of a community where you've got 
other people that are on this, a similar journey to you all trying to achieve things if you're having a tough day sometimes you just need to hear someone else say look you've got this mm-hmm. you can you can yeah. not have that drink yeah you can not eat that takeaway that you don't want to eat or mm-hmm. you can keep going you don't have to quit your job it'll be fine you will get the promotion yeah just just any of these things but if you've got that in from someone else it's far more powerful in my opinion and from you know, what I've seen to work. It is. Well, you know, it's like, um, you're probably not at the age with your kids yet, but I know that I could tell something to, I have a 23 year old, 21 year old and a 17. Um, they're not likely to take something from me as like, Oh, mom. But if you or another one of my colleagues or something were to say, Hey, you might want to try this to listen. Because yeah. mom, even if she's in that world, doesn't really matter. She's mom or dad. But someone else, an impartial person out there, they're, they're, they're more likely to listen. You know? It's, it's so true. It's mm-hmm. so true. I've had it with my son when I've been um, doing homework with him. And he's, that's my eight-year-old. Huh? And he'll, he'll challenge me if, I, <laughs> if I'm saying, that's not quite right. Uh-huh. My, teacher, my teacher said, my teacher said. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's, it's good that he will listen to his teacher and that he's got that, that relationship with me that's completely different. He, he mm. learns certain things from me, but if he's being taught something academically by a teacher, he's like, yeah, that's my person who teaches me that stuff every day. Yeah. That's cool. They're not you. I can't answer back to them, dad, but I can answer back to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is definitely... Yeah, the way it is. I mean, I remember being that way. Same thing. Growing up, my parents, ah, I know what's going on. I've got it all figured out at whatever age I was, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about, I don't know, uh, uh, your best tips to give men that are looking for some support and, um, well, willing to ask for support, what you might want to talk to them about. And um, we'll be back, everyone. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My guest, Luke, and I have been talking about transformation, men's transformation specifically, and all kinds of um, techniques for anxiety, for overcoming things, for, well, so many things. Um, So, Luke, I want to ask you one question, or actually a couple of questions, but one, um, so say you are getting a cup of coffee at Starbucks or something, and somebody just happens to ask you like you know boy I need to make some changes in my life what would you say to them so they're saying that to a friend Mm -hmm. yeah if they're saying to a friend it's um for me the most what from what I know now the the best thing to do is to point them in the direction of a professional Mm -hmm. and the reason I say that is because a lot of time, the most talked about topic on men's mental health groups and men's groups is issues in their relationship. Mm-hmm. So most of the time, a man is going to talk to another man about a problem in his relationship. That's what's mm-hmm. getting him down. Mm-hmm. And the friend will be more biased towards his friend. Mm-hmm. And because if you haven't gone through the work of understanding what, what words don't serve people, what types of things you could say that could cause them to actually feel worse about themselves Mm -hmm. or feel more in conflict about what decision I can make is it's not the best way to support someone I know that now I didn't know that before um so I personally would point them in the direction of a professional Mm -hmm. now a lot of men don't want to talk to a professional because Mm -hmm. they don't know what to say Mm -hmm. and for any of those men out there it's not your job to know what to say it's our job to know what to ask right 
And I mean, I, I had anxiety about even phoning up to insure my car when I was 18. So my mum used mm. to do it because um, I didn't want them to ask a question I didn't know the answer to. Mm. And it's, yeah. it's very common with men to kind of have that mentality. And I, I see it a lot in groups. Oh, I've got an appointment with a therapist tomorrow. I'm really scared because I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. So the, if, if that's your friend, support them through the journey. Mm-hmm. just say look I'll help you find someone if you want um and and just support them with that reach mm-hmm. out to a coach have a look at someone that's if you can find someone that's more specific mm-hmm. then it's it's really good um that, that specializes in whatever area they're really suffering in mm-hmm. but they've got to start the journey and they have to want to start the journey and if they feel supported by their friend, they're far more likely to, to begin. Mm-hmm. And once they begin, the chances are they'll continue. So I, that's, that's, what I would, that's what I would advise. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's different, there's different levels. I'm actually, I probably won't have it ready um, for the next couple of months, but I'm also developing some self-help um tools for people to use Mm -hmm. because i know men don't like to be seen initially and there was some self-help stuff i used but now i know what i know i i'm able to combine them and i'm going to create some self-help things for for guys to maybe dip their toe in the water there before they become seen they can do these things in private Mm -hmm. with no one else knowing right um and that's something that I didn't have to the degree that I, I'm going to now deliver. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of things. If anyone's curious about those further down the line, they can always check in with me and I can let them know how I'm getting on with that. But they will be on my website in the next couple of months. Um, but also just getting on the phone. If, if you just want to get on the phone with myself or other coaches, pretty, there's not many I know that don't do a free call. Mm-hmm, and, the re- and the reason we do a free call is so we can assess where you are and where you mm-hmm. want to get to yeah. what have you what have you been through what are you struggling with and what's the goals that you want to reach yeah and if I'm the then, right one exactly mm-hmm. do we do we work oh, okay mm-hmm. I mean there could be some people that come in and I would say to them do you want to just start in a group where you're seeing other guys sharing what's coming up for them Mm-hmm. sharing what's going on because yeah. as men if we see someone else go first we're like ah he's just done that everyone applauded him mm-hmm. for doing what we've told is wrong i'm going to give that a go because i don't i won't admit this to myself i want to be loved by them too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so yeah so it just depends where you are what level of support you want um but just get on a call it's a it's a free call right absolutely yes and there's a lot of good people in our community um what what would you say because i know you dabbled a bit here too what is the best advice you could give a wife who is her husband is having some struggles what's the best way she can support him don't give up on him yeah yeah um a lot of a lot of relationships break down because the (laughs) they give up on each other for different things Mm -hmm. because women struggle too women have their own problems and and there's men that aren't um we take everything personal in relationships there's so much that we just we take really personal and then we can't connect and get to the bottom of the problems Mm -hmm. So if you don't take how they're behaving personal, give them hope, maybe Mm -hmm. put some things in front of them to watch some self-help videos, or it's it's very difficult. My wife did this for me. She was putting stuff in front of me for a long time Mm -hmm. until finally one thing was the thing that I was going to bite on and go, yeah, I'm going to give that a go. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really, really important. 
So what if he says, I'm not good enough the way I am? You gotta fix me? <clears throat> None of us feel good enough. And that's why yeah. we, even if you look at um, a lot of bodybuilders, mm. they are so good at what they do because they don't feel good enough about themselves and they're trying to overcome that yeah. and change it. I mean, I, if you, if you look at a lot of men's mental health, it's go to the gym, just mm -hmm. pump some weights. I agree that is really, that's really good, but you've got to do the inner work as well. You've got to do the work in here. This, this is, yeah. we neglect what's going on inside so much. Mm -hmm. And unless we're working on that, then it doesn't matter how big we get, how strong we get, how great our six pack is. It's just not going to change the way we feel. It will short term, right. not yeah. long term. Right. And vice versa, if you change what's going on in your head only and you don't have any healthy practices, which is unlikely if you've done the inner work. Right. But <clears throat> if you did the inner work and then didn't do anything to move your body, mm -hmm. then you probably will get to a point where you don't feel great about yourself again and you need to do more inner work. So it's, it's about doing both of them. It's really, really, really important. Yeah, I think that two go together. I don't know how it wouldn't yeah. even work if it if if you didn't do both together. But I just know that I've heard that a lot of, a lot of times um, in relationships is like, but but he thinks I'm trying to fix him if I say this. You know, it's like I'm not, but I'm trying to get us kind of both on the same page because I'm doing this work. So, and it's kind of like nothing's happening over here, and he he thinks I'm going to leave him because I'm doing all these things without him, and you know it it's it can be a challenge. It's it's difficult, and only the the person who's struggling with the problem has mm -hmm. the ability to step up to want to change it. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. on on the the men's mental, I'm part of a men's mental health group, and there's ten thousand people on there. Mm -hmm. um, and I signed up for a challenge last week. It was a free challenge for, I think it was like 400 men doing this challenge. And it wasn't like intense exercise. It was all, it's actually all brain work, looking on your, your goals and dreams, the future, and just kind of working together to motivate each other. Mm -hmm. Not one person from that group joined. I did a post and someone else did a post in there. Not one person joined. Wow. So if they don't want, and I got, I got really annoyed. It wasn't even my event. I yeah. just put it in there because I wanted to help. You know, that's yeah. that's what my my mission is, is to help. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no one joined mm -hmm. from that community. Right. And I realized that I, if they don't want to be helped, that's that there's nothing I can do about it. Right. So if your husband doesn't want to be helped, mm -hmm. I said don't give up on him, and I mean don't give up on him. Yeah. But only he can make that step. And right. the the importance of him getting in a community. This is why my, my online community um, where we'll meet up for conversations and connecting mm -hmm. will be free because yeah. these guys, if they're going to say no to that, you know, you just need to give them the space and time until they come around to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I agree. That's what I've often told clients of mine, I coach mainly women, but I have some men now. Um, and I will say, it's just, just give him time. Look at the little boy inside. He just wants you to love him. You know, it, it just like you want to be loved. It's the same thing. Just give him some time. He will come around. And depending upon what their beliefs are, spiritual beliefs, pray about it, you know, talk to other people about it, see, surround him in light, whatever it is that works for you, you know, um, He's worth fighting for. You loved him, at, you know, at one point here. So keep going, you know? Yeah. And when he does take that step, mm -hmm. it'll be, you know, he'll be changed forever. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's really good. So is there, um, as we're, we're putting the final touches on the show here, is there anything else you want to impart or anything else you want to say? And then please share your handles again for social media. It, the, the message is just there's if you haven't spoken to me or another coach and you're on the mm -hmm. edge then there is still hope it's there yeah. mm -hmm. and there's nothing that's bad enough that if you find the right person 
they can't help with because they can help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So don't give up. How you're feeling at this moment in time can be changed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one more time, where can they find you? Instagram and Facebook, just Coach Luke H or Luke Horstead on um, on Facebook. I've got the business account and the personal account on there. Um, and the email address, if they wanted to send me an email, is coachlukeh at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And the website, coachlukeh.com. So oh, all lovely. very simple. And yeah, feel free to drop me a message if you need any simple. guidance. Yeah, simple and easy to find. Thank you so much, Luke. I really appreciate you coming on the show today very much. And um, thank you everybody for joining us today. I hope that you have a wonderful, beautiful, magnificent Christmas and holiday season. And um, again, thank you so much for joining us and see you the following Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Transformation with Martinet. Did listening today spark a sense of hope and possibility? Hold on to this feeling and tune in every second and fourth Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific for more inspiring conversations with Martinet and her guests. They will show you there is hope and you are right where you need to be. Martinet is dedicated to supporting you right where you are while launching you towards promise, passion, and possibility that leads to the fulfilled life your heart aches for. If you're tired of being stuck, schedule a complimentary consultation with Martinet and get on the exciting path towards the life you want to be living. Visit martinetemmons.com and make your appointment today.